Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will learn about Collis Fracture on X-ray. Collis Fracture is the fracture of the distal radius. It is usually caused by a fall on an outstretched hand. It is a common fracture in older adults with osteoporosis. We will look at X-ray images of Collis Fracture and compare them with the normal wrist. All the cases shown today are of the right arm. This is an AP view of the wrist joint, the anteroposterior view. We can see the eight wrist bones. Our main focus today is the distal radius because collis fracture occurs at this point. This tip of the radius is the styloid process. The image on the right shows a distal radius fracture. A horizontal crack is present in the bone. This is the fracture line. It runs horizontally at a right angle to the length of the radius. This type of fracture is a transverse fracture. An angle called the radio inclination angle is used to assess the radius and is also helpful in the management of Colley's fractures. It can help us in telling whether surgery is required or not. It is the angle between a line perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the radius and a line connecting the radial styloid tip to the ulnar aspect of the radius. The line touches this tip of the styloid process of the radius at this point, and it touches the ulnar aspect of the radius at this point, and it joins the other line that is perpendicular to the length of the radius. This is the angle formed. Normally this angle is between 21 and 25 degrees approximately. In a Coley's fracture, this angle gets reduced, and if it's below 15 degrees, surgical management is recommended. The radial height can be measured by drawing a straight line that touches the radial styloid process and a second straight line that touches the lunate fossa of the radius at this point. We can measure this vertical distance. Normally this distance is between 11 and 13 millimeters approximately. A reduced radial height indicates radial shortening from impaction or collapse of the distal radius. In this image, you can see the overriding of the distal fracture. This is an impacted Coley's fracture. Usually this distance is less than 10 millimeters in a fracture, but in severe cases it can be below 5 millimeters or even zero. This is the lateral view showing the wrist joint, the radius and ulna. The radius and ulna overlap so it can be a bit difficult to distinguish between them. The radius is a bit higher than the ulna in this view. The styloid process of the radius is seen above the styloid process of ulna. The image on the right is of the same case seen in AP view in the previous image. It shows a Coles fracture in lateral view. There is dorsal angulation of the distal fracture fragment. The dorsal side is the back of the hand, the posterior side of the hand or arm. We can see that the fracture fragment has displaced backwards. There is a dorsal displacement of the distal fragment. Due to this displacement and angulation, the hand and arm appear deformed. This deformity is called dinner fork or silver fork deformity because it resembles the shape of a fork especially this curved part of the fork. The volar tilt angle is measured in a lateral view. It is the angle between a line perpendicular to the long axis of the radius and a line along the distal radial articular surface. The line must touch this aspect of the radius. This is the angle formed. Normally, this angle is between 10 and 15 degrees. In an unstable cause fracture, this angle can be greater than 20 degrees. Here is another case of a callus fracture. 
A transverse fracture is present in the distal radius. It is also an impacted fracture because we see overlapping of the distal fracture fragment on the radius. The radial height is significantly reduced, indicating radial shortening. The radial inclination angle is also severely reduced. This is a lateral view of a different case of collis fracture. There is dorsal angulation and dorsal displacement of the distal fracture fragment. The dinner fork deformity is also present in this case due to the dorsal displacement and angulation of the distal fracture fragment, which forms a dorsal curve resembling a fork. Here is another case of a collis fracture in lateral view. The dorsal angulation and displacement is also present here. In this fracture, there was no displacement of the distal fracture fragment. This was an undisplaced fracture. No overlapping of the fracture fragment on the radius is present, indicating no impaction or collapse of the distal radius. In its lateral view, no dorsal angulation or displacement was present. Here is another case showing an undisplaced coalesce fracture. A transverse fracture line is present in the distal radius. This fracture line is subtle as compared to previous cases, but we can still see a horizontal crack in the distal radius. This is a separate case of a collis fracture in lateral view. Some dorsal angulation and displacement of the distal fracture fragment is present. A feature known as the pronator quadratus sign is also helpful in evaluating not just collis fractures but also soft tissue injury of the wrist. The pronator quadratus muscle is present over the distal radius. The pronator fat pad appears as a thin, linear, soft tissue shadow anterior to the distal radius. You can see this thin, dark line over here in the lateral view. This line is the pronator quadratus sign. This is present in normal cases. In a collis fracture, this thin line can either disappear or get displaced. Here it is dimmed and displaced. It actually appears to be bulging outwards and has a convex shape, whereas in the normal image, it appears somewhat straight and attached to the distal radius. Here is another example of the pronator quadratus sign. In normal cases, we see a dark, linear, soft tissue shadow anterior to the radius. Whereas in collis fracture, this line is bulging and somewhat brighter than the normal one. This line will be seen at the palmar aspect of the hand. This is the palmar side of the hand. Comminution refers to fragmentation. When the bone is broken into three or more fragments, it is called a comminuted fracture. Here we can see multiple fracture lines in the radius, and we see around four fragments in the radius. The ulna is also fractured. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.